Hello, and welcome to another episode of Breadcast Movie and TV Talk. So this is another episode about Star Wars. And no, not just the movies. I'm going to talk about the movies, the toys, and Galaxy's Edge. Starting with the movies, if you watched my last video about the future of Star Wars, you know that in two years we're going to be getting another trilogy with at least two side movies like Solo and Rogue One. But what about the trilogy that just wrapped up? I find that not many people have many good things to say about it unless you're one of those die-hard Disney Star Wars fans and are just able to ignore the problems in the sequel trilogy. I don't hate the sequel trilogy, but there are movies that have glaring problems that should have been fixed. I watched a video that said that George Lucas had treatments for the sequel trilogy before Lucasfilms was purchased by Disney. Lucas even thought that they would use his treatments, but they didn't. They didn't because Disney was not obligated to use what Lucas had in a state that any competent writer could have just took what Lucas had already done and then turned it into a decent movie. What else can really be said about the sequel trilogy that literally everyone else has already said? I think they're mediocre films at best, but I do find them entertaining. Now let's talk about the toys, because this is something I've been seeing recently that is supposedly an attributing factor to why The Rise of Skywalker isn't doing so hot. I've seen the pictures of stores like Walmart and Meijer right around the release of The Rise of Skywalker, and that's empty shelves of Star Wars toys. Now, I can imagine that because a certain holiday like Christmas also happened right around the release of The Rise of Skywalker, that's probably why the shelves of Star Wars toys are pretty empty. Now, the day that I wrote this script for this episode, January 4th, 2020, I went back to a Walmart near me and they still have not restocked the Star Wars toys. Or the Transformers for that matter, which is why I was there in the first place. The funny thing is that when I went to my Walmart, as I was entering, I saw they had advertisements for new Lego Star Wars sets. Well, I went to their Lego section, and that was also barren as well. Again, probably due to Christmas, but the why wasn't important because they are advertising new Star Wars toys in the Lego section, and they don't actually have them. So even though the biggest reason for the lack of Star Wars toys around this movie's release is Christmas, the fact that a week after Christmas, some stores have still not restocked their Star Wars toys is also an issue, but I don't think the toys are why the movie didn't do so hot. I believe that was all the movie. Lastly, I'm going to talk about Galaxy's Edge, the theme park at Disneyland. I've been reading up and watching some things about this park and seeing that Disney is having some problems with it. They had a poor opening day, but all the big wigs are trying to say that didn't happen. On top of that, I've read the reports of employees getting their hours and wages cut because of the lack of attendance, which is sad. But what's worse is what I have seen from the people who have walked through the park. My favorite one from a YouTube channel called That Star Wars Girl. Not because of what she filmed during her walkthrough, but because of what she said after is all the glaring problems of Galaxy's Edge. So the first is that the setting doesn't feel like Star Wars because they just picked a made-up location that was not a part of the Star Wars universe already. Well, okay, before that, we have to talk about the price just to get into the park. The base price for Galaxy's Edge is $150 per person. So for an average four-person family, that is $600 just to get in the park. Let's add to that their custom merchandise that they advertise so much for, the Droid Workshop and the Build Your Own Lightsaber. Droid Workshop is 100 bucks per droid you build, which adds another $400, bringing us to $1,000 for our mythical family of four. But to top it all off, the Build Your Own Lightsaber experience costs whopping $200 per person, which adds another $800, bringing our grand total to $1,800 for the average four-person family to get in the park and get the exclusive items and experiences as well. Going back to what That Star Wars Girl had to say, there are so many gift shops selling toys 
and not action figures. And the only ride is the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run ride, which Disney was expecting two hour wait times all summer, but, you know, they were getting ha less than half of that, 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes at the most. The real problem that she pointed out is that what you see in Galaxy's Edge is all sequel trilogy stuff. You have the Millennium Falcon, but no Han Solo, no Princess Leia, no Luke Skywalker, no Lando, Darth Vader, Yoda. I think you can see where I'm going with this. There was a Chewbacca, but how do we know it was really Chewbacca? It's a Wookiee with a bandolier. It could be any Wookiee. And I'm not just talking about the walk-around characters either. I'm talking about in the merchandising of all these gift shops. She had to find a secluded spot in one of the larger gift shops that had like a replica of the R2-D2 in there, but no C-3PO? They had a shirt with that one uh, droid from Rogue One that was all about droid rights. Yet no Han Solo? They had like Vader on a mug and like a another thing. Same for Palpatine and whatnot. What is up with that? This park is too much about the sequel trilogy that they don't realize that most people coming here were brought in on the original trilogy or the prequel trilogy. Plus all these other gift shops had like plushies. Not a single Star Wars action figure. Like what the fuck are you doing Disney? This is the perfect opportunity to have some exclusive Black Series action figures or just all of the Black Series figures and the Classic Series, whatever the three and three quarters inch figures are from. Now I understand that the lack of original and prequel trilogy characters is because George Lucas still owns some of the rights or maybe it was all of the rights to those characters and so if Disney wants to use them, George Lucas gets some of that money. We all know Disney has to have all of the money. So, there's too many gift shops. There's nothing to do. They're, the things at these gift shops are insanely high priced. Like, they had Force Holocrons for $50. They don't sell much merchandise for the movies before the sequel trilogy. It's just not looking good here. The last thing I want is to go back to the pricing, because I found one more interesting article. The last thing is that... Disney is making a Star Wars hotel that I guess they're calling the Galactic Star Cruiser. It's super fancy where you can, you know, look out all the windows and see space and ships and there's some kind of bar area and an area where you can lightsaber with a droid shooting at you experience, whatever. This hotel is a two-night, three-day only experience. But the price? For one person? This hotel will cost you a whopping $3,300. And they say that this option puts it at $1,000 a person. But the rooms hold up to five people, and for that option you get to pay $7,200. The icing is that these prices are just for regular rooms. They don't even have the pricing for the captain's quarters rooms, which I'm going to guess are going to be some astronomical, like, fifteen dollars to $20,000 a person type of thing. So if I take our $1,800 for our average four-person family to get into Galaxy's Edge and then do the droid and lightsaber build, plus we want to stay at the Star Wars Hotel and get the total Star Wars experience. You'd be looking at spending $9,000 for three days and two nights. $9,000 for three days at a pike, a park that is a glorified shopping mall. And even that, the bar that you can go to to get the blue milk, their cheapest drink is $45. You can get a ch chips and a co or a sandwich and a Coke for $30. That's outrageous. I don't know why, and, and, and obviously, no one's going to this park. I don't know why anyone would. Now, this is the last video I'm going to be making about Star Wars for a while. So that's all I have to say, so if you're out of the conversation, leave a comment below. As always, thanks for listening, and goodbye.